Believing what they say and what their actions are is key to your future. Let's get into these relationship issues. Hello, Pearls, and welcome back to my channel. I'm April, founder and creator of Leaner's Pearls. Um, today's subject is, well, most of them are near and dear to my heart, but this is actually personal too for me because I, as a woman, have dealt with this. And my friends, I've had conversations with various women and even my daughters as they became adults and started to date, um, have dealt with this. That whole thing about being with a man and being in a relationship with someone who is clearly telling you with not only their words and conversations that you have when you have these confrontational conversations with them about where are we and what are we doing, but their actions quite frankly show you that they're not ready. They're not committing to you. They don't want to commit with you and they're not ready to take that next step and be serious in a relationship with you. And unfortunately, it's our heart. Our heart wants this person. And when our heart wants what it wants, we want and we hope and we hear with, with our heart, with what our heart wants and with what our heart wants to see. <laughs> and then it's also hope. And so I wanted to get into this a little bit because as we're getting into, the, into November, I'm changing gears into more relationships and so forth and so on and, and the different issues that we have in relationships. When someone tells us, you know, um, even if we're just simply dating somebody and we're trying to get serious with them and, you know, um, we're pretty clear and defined on what we want in our lives and in our relationship and if we want a relationship and we're ready to commit, when we hear things like, um, I'm not ready to settle down right now. I'm not really thinking about marriage right now. I'm still trying to get myself together. There's things I need to get, um, you know, um, take care of. And when we hear those things, excuses are hidden truths. Simple and plain. Excuses like that, that's hidden truths. They're telling us, we don't, I'm not trying to settle down. I'm not ready to get into anything serious. I'm still out here doing me. What we need to start doing is we need to start learning to listen. And I've told friends this and I've told my daughters this. You have to listen in their language, not yours, not your heart's language. Um, I had a friend of mine who was dating someone and, you know, she was doing everything. She would go over there with dishes and cook and, and groceries. And, and she was doing all the wifey duties that we know about. And it just got to a point where I had advised her. I said, why don't you just sit him down and ask him what this is, what, what's going on and let him know. Now in her, in their, both of their defense and when they first started to date, they were not, um, she wasn't ready either. She was still getting over a past situation. And, and then when it shifted, it shifted, they were both in an agreement. And that's another thing too, we'll get into, but they were both in an agreement of this is what it was. And then it became unsaid that this is still what it was. We were kind of, we're still just hanging out and having a good time or whatever. And then it shifted for her and she started to feel like, oh, this is somebody I want to be with. This is someone I want to date exclusively. And I told her, I said, well, why don't you sit down and have a conversation with him and let him know that things have shifted for you? She did. And he basically told her, well, they didn't shift for him. And... Because he did, I guess, develop caring feelings for her. And I'm not saying that when people are, you know, leading you on, for lack of a better way to say it, or what have you, a lot of times they're really not leading you on, though. If you hear them, I mean, they do care about you, and it doesn't mean that they don't care about you because they're not dealing with someone they don't care. I mean, why would they even bother? But, um, and they still like certain qualities and, and the benefits of whatever it is your being in their life is bringing them, but... They're not, when you shift and they don't shift, you almost can't really blame them, but you have to allow yourself to hear it, hear it with your, hear it through their language, not your heart's language, because everybody has their own method and their mode of communication and what their words mean when they say them. And that's where we, we, as women, we end up um, getting in trouble and being in these long-term relationships that really aren't relationships. And they end up becoming toxic because we're not hearing them and we're not seeing their actions as they should be interpreted. And then 
we end up saying, well, they're not listening. Yes, they are. And, and they're telling you, you're just not listening. <laughs> when you continue to do this, um, which is my next point, you hinder and block your blessing of the person that really is out there and is waiting for you. It could even be someone that's in your both of your circles and just waiting for y'all to get done. You get done with him and get tired and, you know, just waiting for you to be done so that they can step in. You just never know where that one is and where the, and, and if they're, you're on their radar and they're just waiting for you to stop loving on and giving and devoting yourself to someone who does not share that same feeling and is not reciprocating it for you. Um, you know, a lot of times. We feel like, you know, we're the issue, but we're really not. The issue is things have changed or we're ready to move forward and they're not. And we're not seeing it and understanding it as it is. Um, that's what happens a lot of times when if you notice in some relationships, you know, you're doing everything, you're doing the wifey thing and what have you. And you're in your or the girlfriend, good girlfriend thing. And things do end up breaking up and he ends up either getting married or getting committed to somebody. And that's a slap in the face. It's like, well, it's not about her being better than you. Sometimes what it is, is that men are not stupid. I don't know why we keep saying, oh, it's just a man thing. Oh, they're just men. Men are not dumb. Nobody, they're not stupid. You know when you're in the place in front of a good woman. Okay. They know that. They know that you're a good woman. They know that you are worthy of being someone's wife, someone's steady girlfriend, somebody, something. And they just know that whatever the quality, they know they can't meet you in that spot. Maybe you are on another level and they know that they're not going to be on that level for you. And they know they're not going to get on that level anytime soon. And she is, just happens to meet them and they just end up blending and, and it just works. There's somebody for everybody. And it does not necessarily mean that she's better than you. It does not mean that there's something wrong with you. It just means that she was what he needed and wanted and he can't meet you. You belong to something else, someone else, something not better than him, but just on your level and where you are. And they're already waiting for you because they're already where you are. So, you know, that's what happens. We end up being these good women to these men that won't commit to us. And we can't, we're not because we're blocking ourselves and blinding ourselves with, we just hope we want our heart just wants them to, if they would just blah, blah, blah. And it's just not going to happen. So we need to take the blinders, our heart blinders off and see them and hear what they're actually saying to us and interpret it in their language and learn to interpret things in other language, in their language and other love languages and stop hearing it the way we want to hear it. And, oh, he's just saying so-and-so, but no. Because I'm going to tell you something I've learned in my 43 years on this earth. Men are pretty direct. I mean, they there's the BSers out here and the manipulators, and there's many of them. But for the most core part of it, men are pretty simple. Men are pretty direct. They don't really do all the fluff like we do, okay? Their brain waves are even, their patterns and thinking are just even more simplified than a woman's. It really is true. It's even science. And, you know, we'll say 50 million shades of, a, of the same color and they'll just say blue. <laughs> we'll say royal blue and midnight and navy crisp, blah, blah. And they're like, it's blue. And because they keep saying blue, blue, blue to us and we're busy. We want to hear them say royal blue, but because we just know it's blue, but they're not saying royal blue. But if I could just blah, 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 they're not going to. They're saying it in their way. They're saying it in their language. You have to hear them. And you have to take the hope that it's going to be what you think it should be off so that you can free yourself and free them and you can move on so that your true mate and you will find each other. And the one that's intended for you will be able to come along and you need to get him out the way. You know, um, they know you're a good catch. They know what they have. They know what's involved. And Truth be told, sometimes it is as simple as they're just they don't want to settle down, period. They, there's a lot of other oats that they need to sow out here and they, there's other oats that they need to sow out here and things that they need to get out their system. They know that they're not going to get out of their system anytime soon. They don't want to. So it's not that they don't know that you're a good woman. They know. Um, 
One thing I have always said, and I learned myself, is you will never have to plead, beg, argue, ultimatum a man who wants to be with you. You just won't. People in general, people, they're still human beings like the rest of us. They learn right and wrong just like we learn right and wrong. Okay, they're still human beings. And they will never have, to, people do, it is natural, it's instinctive for a person to do what they want to do. And a man who, who is ready, who knows what he wants, will not have to be coaxed, loved into, loved through, pulled through. Like, it will not, <laughs> they don't need for you to ultimate them, ultimate them into committing and, and, and marrying you and, and being with you. They won't. A man who's ready will stand firm and strong. And if you're too busy and if your schedule is this, he one thing an older woman told me years ago is a man who wants to be with you will get in where he fit in. He fits in and he will make the time. He will he will he will know your schedule. OK, he will know. OK, Wednesday night she has class. Monday night she has this da, da, da. like he will know because he cares enough. He pays attention. People instinctively do and be and are present where they want to be. You don't have to, you don't ha you're not going to have to do any of that. And because you are a good person and because you do have those qualities, I mean, you almost can't blame them for holding on to you because they don't want someone else to come in and snatch you up because they know whatever qualities you have, be it the sex is great, your cooking is great, you help take care of his kids or babysit his kids or help take care of his mama or whatever you're doing in his life. He don't want to lose that. He doesn't want to lose that. So he's going to tell you after. So, listen, sometimes you get so tired of telling people what it is or showing them. That, well, I'm just going to tell her what she needs. to. Hear. They know exactly how to play the game to tell you what they need to tell you to keep you present. And I've always told every woman that I know that's had this type of situation is go ahead and be not accessible. Go ahead and shut it down. They'll notice you're, that you're not there. They'll, they know they're not stupid. <laughs> Go ahead and not be available. Go ahead and not make yourself available. Don't answer that phone right away. When you do, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm doing so-and-so. Be busy. Stop being so accessible because you have to start pulling yourself away from what you know it isn't. And once they start seeing that you're moving on, they'll get the hint after a while. They'll get the hint. But if you're going to continue to allow yourself to be in this situation, they're not going to push you out. They're going to continue to sex you. They're going to continue to block another dude from coming along. Because they already know that you're worth something. They already know that you are worth a commitment and, and not all the foolishness. So they're not going to want to they're not going to push you into going and finding it so that they lose the goodies and everything. They're not going to do that. So when you do have those, when you what, here's what I implore you to do. If they're, you're in this situation, have the sit down. What are we doing? What is this? First of all, they hate those conversations, especially when they're not ready. And you know what else? You don't have to have these kind of conversations in fear with a man who's ready. Because most of the time, you know, even Steve Harvey said it. Men profess, profess, provide and protect. And it is the truth. When my husband and I started dating, I honestly thought we were just having a good time. <laughs> OK, he was single for a while. I was single for a while. And I'm telling you, we, we met and we started dating and we were we were inseparable from our first date. We really, truly really were. And I honestly didn't know what it was. I didn't have a label. He didn't have a label. I was just enjoying him. I wasn't in a rush for him to meet anybody. He wasn't in a rush for me to really meet anybody. We did meet each other's kids pretty early. But like, you know, and. I'll never forget his phone rang and it was one of his, I don't know, ex-girlfriends or chick he used to deal with or whatever. Somebody, you know, and he said, well, something, something, something. I with my girl right now, my girlfriend, something like that. So um, when he got off the phone, I was like, well, I'm his girlfriend. Profess. Men who want to be with you will put a label on you. You don't have to you don't have to stand on top of your head and do cartwheels. They know they're not stupid. Men know what they're looking for. We all everybody has, you know, um, 
standards. Everybody has preferences. So when they see it, because my husband snatched me, like <laughs> he was waiting for me. Okay. And I had been in a relationship where, you know, like I said, I had, I was single, um, seven strong years before my husband, I had dated off and on, but I wasn't in any committed relationships. I was a mother, single mother. I was doing my thing. And, um, I was in a relationship with somebody or so I thought I was, obviously I wasn't really in one cause I didn't marry him. <laughs> and, um, you know, we both had kids. We both came from situations or whatever, and we were still, you know, getting through or whatever, doing our thing, working and, and doing this thing called life. And I had, I felt we were moving forward. So I, and I was always very particular about who came around my kids. And I let him meet my, both my children. And he had a little girl. And I honestly thought, well, you see how great of a mother I am and how I take care of mine. He would never let me meet his daughter, ever ever meet his daughter. We even had a big blowout about it. I was like, well, you got a couple things over here at my house. You've seen my kids like your daughter's better than mine. Like, you know, what is the deal? Like he was going through a situation with her mother, obviously. And I was in long story short, apparently I was not worth the headache to risk her seeing me and going back and telling mommy about me. And so that was that. And that broke my heart because he ended up dating somebody else and she was around his daughter. And I know for a fact, it wasn't, I know, well, I didn't know then because it does hurt. I didn't know then, but I know now and I've learned this, that it really wasn't anything wrong with me because she just was whatever, you know, she, she was for whatever reason, they just meshed and they clicked and he saw and felt that she was the one and I wasn't. And that broke me down. And I did not listen. I did not pay attention to the signals. I kept trying. I kept trying to be there. He would call. I would run. He would he would call. I would pick it up. And, you know, I know so many of us do this. So many of us see this. And when to use my husband as an example, the 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 other side of that is my husband was present when my husband and I first dated. One of the things he said to me when we very first were dating, he wanted to take me out to the movies. And I said, well, I have my daughter. So and I didn't really contact her babysitter, you know, to give her enough notice. Da, da, da. He was like, well, why can't she come with us? You want? Are you ready for that? I remember it, even with helping me with different things like he was he was there. He was a presence. There was no question of if. He was there. He was there through some very hard times, too, that I was dealing with in the beginning that I'll share with you later on in this channel. But the point of the matter is he was present. He got in. I worked late. He was on my back step waiting for me to get to the house like he was. You do not have to when a man is ready to be with you. And you know this because if you've ever had a, a decent relationship, you know that you don't have to play with someone to be with you. You it is what it is. You know your place in their life. You know that you're their woman. You know that. So you have to pay attention to their their actions and their words when you do have those conversations and you have to listen to their language, not what your heart wants to hear and not what your heart wants to see. You have to, because otherwise you're going to continue to commit yourself to a man who is not committing to you and you are just delaying your 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 true one from coming along. And I'm not saying it's going to be all roses and wonderful and the streets are going to be paved with gold with it and flower petals are going to open up and it's going to be some big old romantic scene all the time when you do find your one. But I would rather go through life and the ups and downs and left and rights with the one that I'm supposed to be with instead of wasting my life and my time with somebody that it, it obviously is not for me. OK, so that's pretty much it on this one. Um, Listen and he, listen and see what they're showing you and telling you, not what your heart wants to see and what your heart is hoping to hear. Stop it. Stop doing that to yourself. Let them go find her and you go and be ready for him to come find you. And you it's such a burden and you'll save yourself so much hurt. And another part of this, and I'll be doing this in another video, is this is why I always preach that it is so key that you have those difficult conversations before your heart gets involved, before the legs open and the heart opens. 
because when you when you when you know what you want and you're not and you're not dating without purpose like many men and many women men men and women out here unfortunately not just men but because this is not a male bashing channel but it's a real channel but many people are out here dating without a purpose if you know that you're dating because you know what you want so number one if you're dating with purpose and you that's why you have to have those conversations up front you have to ask the nosy questions when stuff don't look right you need to call it out because then the heart and the legs then open. Now you now you got a bond and a soul tie. And you didn't let yourself fall into this because you're in control of you. And now you're in you're in this half relationship where you're committing to someone who isn't committing to you. Or the second half of that is you both did agree it was what it was and things done changed. For you and it didn't change for them, but you still going along like it like it is what it is. And, you know, you want more deep down and you're just welcoming yourself for hurt and disappointment. So have those conversations early when you start getting them feelings and you start something ain't right. Can't call me after a certain time that it like, you know what? I mean, we can get into this, but it's to make this video two hours long. But you have to start. Being ready to have those conversations early so that you don't fall into this pit. And if you find yourself already in the pit, you need to have that conversation or revisit that conversation. Hear him. Hear it. Take the heart out of it and hear it. And then you need to act accordingly and decide, do you want to continue to go down this path or do you want to cut it now and move on and free yourself? All right, ladies. So as always, comments are open. Feel free to share down below. Please subscribe. We're trying to get this channel up to a thousand subscribers. So please hit like and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. All of the information will be down below. If you have any questions, if you need any advice, if you have any content ideas, I keep all emails in confidence. I will always ask you before I mention anything and share your information on this channel. So please feel free to email me at lenaspearls4 at gmail.com. Until next time, take care and be blessed.